you're going to do at this point is you're going to palm the top card. Now what you need to do here is while you're patterning and you say, which card did you think of? You're going to push the top card over ever so slightly. You're going to push it back and catch a break, a pinky break below the top card. You're going to bring your right hand over and you're going to palm the top card, their thought of selection. The way that works is using your middle and thumb, you're going to pivot the card up and to the right ever so slightly and your pinky at the right corner as it's being pivoted is going to push down and it's going to pop the card right up. So from an exposed view from below you can see that the card is going to pop right up into the palm. Okay, this is done under the cover of simply squaring the deck. And of course, first all thing we're going to learn is a spread call. This is a variation on a Hofzinser and Marlowe spread call. What it is, is a way to ribbon spread the cards in your hand to spread them out and control a card to the bottom. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to turn a card face up for explanation purposes, the five of spades. Now here's how it works. There's a few motions at once. The first thing is your right hand spread is going to move to the left until it totally covers the five. Right at that point, once the five is completely covered, the left thumb pinches down on that card, the face down card, right there above the selection. As soon as that happens, at that same moment under the spread, the right middle and ring finger are going to pull the card out and then the forefinger gets into it and they move it out. They just kind of move it backwards outside of the spread. Okay, so you dislodge it from the spread. Simultaneously, you keep spreading cards, so from above it's invisible. And what you're doing is you're going to allow that card to ride all the way to the bottom. Okay? Let's go over the mechanics right it, of the time of the pack. So and I'm going to be in preparation for a turnover pass. Now you're going to do the turnover pass on the offbeat as you talk about, oh, I didn't mean to do that. And you're going to do it right there. Here's a turnover pass. You've got a break above the blue jack space. Right hand goes above. Your forefinger is going to curl underneath the cards. And here's an exposed view of what's going to happen to the bottom packet. You're going to, using your forefinger, flip the packet 90 degrees, just like so. Yeah? And that's going to be under cover of your hand. So from below, here's what it looks like. It gets flipped over 90 degrees. Now from on top, look, it's invisible. You can't see it, and I just did it. As soon as it gets to this point, you're going to use your right forefinger to flip this packet around. Okay? So it looks like this, like it's being flipped around. Here's an exposed view until it lands on top of the other pile, and then you turn them both over. So all it looks like, it should look just like you turned over the deck. And in reality, you actually cut the deck while you're doing it. You're doing a turnover pass. So that's the turnover pass. At this point, you should do Tenkai hand. Palm. Now here's what Tenkai is. If this is your right hand, Tenkai is going to be the cards are placed against your palm with the thumb holding them in place. So your thumb is holding them at the outer left corner. Okay? The cards should feel very natural. Now, a note on the angles. Tenkai is invisible when the back of your hand is showing towards your audience's eyes. So if your audience's eyes is here, notice you can't see the cards. If you move up, they get a flash. If you move down, they get a flash. And if you move too much to the right, you can see it in between my fingers. So you always want to have this side of your hand pointing Diamonds. at your audience. Place it on now, the here's face. the first phase. What we're going to do now is a color change. And the color change is just based on the Herman turnover pass. What I'm going to do is it's going to look just like I rub the card and it changes. Now, how did I do that? What I'm doing, okay, is I've got a break above the bottom card. Here's the action. My right hand is going to hold from above in a modified middle grip so that my right hand is covering pretty much all single fire right there, from that point on to the right. All the cards are covered. My right hand covers it. And here's what my hand is going to do. My forefinger curls under the packet. Here's an exposed view. And it's going to, using my middle finger and my forefinger, turn the card perpendicular to the other cards. There should be absolutely no motion in terms of seeing from the front. When you do this, I just did it right there. It's invisible because your hand is covering your bad angle. Okay? Right there. And it's going to come into play right between your middle, I'm sorry, your pinky and your ring finger. That's where it's going to lie. Okay? Right there. And at this point, once you've gotten to here, you're going to allow it to move forward and you're simply going to use your hand to cover the motion of your hand squaring that against. So here's an exposed view of the whole maneuver. Tilt down. You're going to move it over and out and your hand is just simply going to stay flat and make sure you're covering. From this angle, look, you can't see anything. Okay? And your hand is going to go on front 
and it's gonna rub across to make the illusion of the change, the and your middle finger is just gonna push. Now Here's the grip in your right hand, between your pinky and forefinger. You're going to hold the pack of cards, just like this. Your middle finger and ring finger are going to bend the cards in so that they're concave. Now notice, this is a very strong grip. This is like a death grip on the cards. You're able to shake the cards up and down. Look at this. This portion of your thumbnail, the outer right portion of your thumbnail, is going to do all the work. You're going to bend your thumb in and place it, push it hard, right against this corner of the card. The one nearest to your pinky, right there in the bottom. The bottom left corner, so to speak. You're going to place it in there, and the move is a combination of snapping your fingers straight up, okay? Getting the right amount of friction. What that's going to do is it's going to buckle the card. There's a millisecond that it's going to buckle the card, and then your finger's going to snap, so it's going to allow that buckle to snap into snapping the card out. It's a knack. I'm going to show you what it looks like a few times when I do it. Just like that, okay? You now, an idea. What I'm doing. From when you're looking at it, it's going to spin clockwise. So. Your thumb just goes straight up. Like I said, a rubber thumb tip is going to help greatly. So you can see the motion. The motion is critical. My thumb is going to snap straight up. Once you have the mechanic.